everybody. Thank you for joining us at the West Des Moines Chamber of Commerce's CEO Insight Series. We are so excited. Today we have Bob Ritz with us, CEO of Mercy One. So Bob, this is awesome. I'm so glad you're here. I am too. I'm delighted to be here and look forward to the conversation. This is so great. So Mercy One, tell us about your amazing organization. It sounds like you have a lot of employees and you do a lot of great work at our well, region. Well, you know, Mercy One is an organization that has his, his, existed historically across the state in many ways. Um, most of our, 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 our ministries are founded by sisters mm -hmm. across Iowa. Uh, and some of their uh, hospitals date back over 150 years. Wow. So uh, the name Mercy One is about uh, four years old. Okay. Okay. Uh, but our legacy of caring for our communities dates back a long time. Uh, in Mercy One, um, we have a large organization, relatively speaking. We have about 20,000 colleagues. Gosh. Um, and we have 420 locations throughout the state. Gee. Uh, that includes, um, you know, descriptively 43 hospitals and uh, 260 clinics and a, and a bunch of other sites of service. Uh, so we're a fairly comprehensive system of, of health services to our communities. Uh, and we're passionate about our, our community ties. So I'm really excited to be here to, to talk with you. So, so Mercy One, I think you've had a lot of really exciting changes lately that I've heard in the news. So tell us about those. Well, we all know how change goes. <laughs> Sometimes it can be exciting for one reason or another. Um, and um, uh, Mercy One in, in 1998 uh, was owned and operated by two national Catholic health systems. Okay. Um, Catholic Health Initiatives out of Denver and, and Trinity Health out of Livonia, Michigan. Uh, and since 1998, we existed in a certain form. It's a joint operating agreement. Uh, think about it like a joint venture. Um, in 2016, uh, we made a move to change that structure, uh, knowing that we needed to make one further move. And we made that further move earlier this year. Okay. So in September of this year, uh, Mercy One Now, all of our ministries, all of our locations, or under Trinity Health of Livonia, Michigan. So we have one owner finally. Oh gosh. It just took 24 years to get there. <laughs> well, there's probably a lot of advantages to having one owner then. Well, you can imagine if you uh, operate off of uh, two or three IT systems, uh, two or three accounting systems and mm -hmm. payroll systems, uh, the level of complexity uh, can get uh, is pretty vast. Wow. So with 20,000 employees, that's a huge employee base. Tell us how you support them. I, I looked on your social media. It looks like you have an amazing employees that love, love, love where they work. So well, tell us about we that. We love our colleagues, um, and uh, we're all about the people who serve. Mm. Uh, and that includes the communities we serve in. Um, our colleagues share a common uh, set of, of beliefs, uh, even though we all come from different backgrounds and and are very varied by our, our, our levels of um, uh, responsibility or perhaps even interest, uh, we're all committed to one thing, and that is to serve those who need us. Um, and in, in many cases, uh, the least among us. Mm -hmm. So um, we, our sisters who founded our, our hospitals really wanted to take care of the less fortunate. Uh, that was their primary purpose, is to make sure people didn't have the ability to take care of themselves. Uh, that was their calling. And the Sisters of Mercy came to Iowa, uh, and actually, uh, people don't realize this, but their first hospital was in Davenport. Okay. Uh, they came from Chicago um, at the request of the bishop, um, and then uh, they were on their way to uh, DeWitt to start up their ministry. Uh, and at that point time, the um, uh, illness broke out, cholera. Um, I think it was cholera. And um, so they decided to opt and stay in. They built a hospital in Davenport. Um, the irony is, some of the other exciting news that we have is that um, if all goes as planned, a Genesis Health System in Davenport will become a full member of Mercy One sometime uh, later this year, oh. uh, perhaps early spring. Oh, and uh, uh, one of the hospitals that is included in Genesis Hospitals is that First Mercy Hospital. Oh my God. So one could say that there's a little bit of a full circle uh, history coming to the future. Uh, here in all this uh, activity that's underway. So is this brand new news that you're revealing no, we with us today here? No, or? we publicized this, okay. Um, okay. Uh, at least a letter of intent being signed. Okay, okay, so, um, exciting, wow. Yeah, so we're very excited to, uh, to add Genesis mm -hmm. Health System, a, a great uh, organization, great people. But uh, back to the people question, um, you know, our culture uh, is really surrounds, uh, surrounded by our beliefs. Mm -hmm. And uh, we believe in each other. 
Uh, we believe in recognition. Uh, we believe in teamwork. Um, and most importantly, we believe in delivering personalized care uh, for those we serve. And that includes each other. Mm -hmm. So I think one of the things that we've tried to work on prior to this more recent three-year experience that we've all had called the pandemic is um, a culture that would unify. Um, because the question was, how are we going to become one when at that time we had 18 different names, um, you know, we have 400 and some locations, uh, and many of our locations are seven days a week, uh, 24 hours a day, the lights never go out and the doors are never locked. How do you take all of that variation and create one? And the way that we chose to do that was through our culture. Mm -hmm. So we have been in a very disciplined way uh, trying to foster a unified culture, which is something that can always start, but it can never end. Interesting. How, do you, how did you do that with, with all those employees, all those different yeah. sites? How did you do that? Did you have an outside party come in and kind we, of We had that? some outside assistant for a portion of the time. Uh, it really mm -hmm. was to develop a model. Yeah. Um, but we, uh, among all of our leaders, uh, really did the work together wow. to realize that uh, our behavior, our actions, and the experiences we give our colleagues mm -hmm. is what creates the culture. Mm -hmm. So it's really a call to action on our own behalf to have a mirror every time we make a decision wow. about uh, what is that, what kind of message is that to our culture. Mm. It's been some of the most rewarding work I've been involved with in 38 years. Wow, that's incredible. Yeah. So can you tell us a little bit more about some of that? I know everybody right now, all companies are trying to build the best culture that they can to help attract great talent and, and keep them there. Yeah. And so you might have the secret sauce that might help <laughs> a lot of other companies well, kind of understand let's that. Let's make so, a safe assumption so. that's not true um, <laughs> and don't go from there. <laughs> Uh, we, we developed the model, I, I think, first of all, there has to be a conscious decision that this is important. Mm -hmm. uh, secondly, I think th th there needs to be an awareness that this is not a project. Uh, this isn't even a coat of paint. Uh, this is far deeper into the soil than all of that. Wow. And therefore, what we really need to do is create our own soil, mm -hmm. um, which is stuff that people don't typically spend time on. Mm -hmm. uh, so our uh, efforts really stemmed around What's the framework? Um, and again, um, for us, uh, we, we brought it down to uh, beliefs, experiences, and actions. Mm -hmm. And we realized that our uh, 20,000 colleagues will derive their perspective about Mercy One and how we do our work based on how we as leaders do our work. Mm -hmm. And what kind of messages directly or indirectly do we send, even through our own behavior? Uh, as a leader, uh, how engaged are we? Uh, we? We say we care, do we really care? So for example, we start every meeting with a, um, our culture beliefs are on every agenda mm -hmm. and the results we're looking for are on every agenda. And we tie the meeting to those two things, otherwise we don't have that meeting. In any meeting we can do without, I'm all for. <laughs> um, yeah. As a Catholic organization, faith-based, we actually have a prayer for every meeting. Um, and you know, that helps, I think, ground us to uh, what, what's our purpose. So um, I, I would say that um, everybody's uh, work on culture needs to come internally, yeah. but it's not inherent. You have to foster it. Uh, it may be something that you have all the parts and pieces, but you don't have a framework, and so they don't have a relationship at work. So that framework became paramount for us. Boy, that's really neat. Can we go on your website and learn more about Well, your certainly culture? you can see Is our it... values and, mm -hmm. and our uh, key okay. results. And, yep. Yeah. yeah. And we have a website just to rec it. So we have what we call focused recognition. Okay. So I send cards, all of our leaders do, every Monday. Okay. We send recognition cards to colleagues who are being recognized for something they did uh, previously. And... Um, and again, our culture values, our culture beliefs and our values and all that are on those cards. Um, yeah. But it is a process, and then we do storytelling at every meeting. Hmm. So for example, this morning I was uh, sharing a story to our executive leadership team about all of our Air Methods flight teams here in Central mm -hmm. Iowa. Uh, a member of their team, unfortunately, um, had an unexpected death in the family, a young member of the family over Christmas, totally unexpected, and leaves behind um, a wife and young children. Mm -hmm. So all of our flight team uh, took it upon themselves to create a Christmas for these young kids. Wow. And so those are the kind of stories I receive. Yeah. 
and then I like to pass those on to and thank all of them. And it builds a um, it builds somewhat of a uh, momentum, mm. but it builds a momentum of feeling, yeah. not a momentum of who's winning the game or yeah. uh, or who's getting better results. It's it's really that momentum that people can attach to. Yeah, and so, you care. I, yeah, we care. You care. We care a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Which, which that means everything for, for people. Yeah, so you can see our focus. You see, wow. we have a microsite just for that reason to acknowledge people. Wow, that is that is incredible. Well, I can attest to the fact that Mercy One saved my daughter's life because of caring and quick action, and she's around today because of. Well, because obviously, of you I'm all. glad so, to hear that. Yeah, seriously. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm I have a hear she's doing personal well. affiliation. Yeah, which. Which that's amazing. So I'm excited to learn more about your culture and what you do, and sure. it's, it's just so meaningful. So goals that you might have for the organization, you, Bob Ritz, as the CEO, what are some goals that you have for the for the organization? Well, we, we always have goals, mm -hmm. um, and you know we try to keep it to a, a critical few. Um, those goals should really connect where we are with where we're going, where we want to be, mm -hmm. and uh, tie into, for lack of a better term, you know, our strategic plan. But all that said, they better all be directly aligned with why we're here, which is our mission, and the purpose for which we were developed back in uh, the late 1800s. So um, we, have, we have goals. We have goals to always improve. Uh, our principal responsibility is to provide access to care for our communities. Um, and in, in a state like Iowa, that's, that's a challenge uh, because of topography and and shifts in populations in rural communities yeah. that don't have all those resources. And the reason we have our affiliate, our hospital affiliated network um, is so that we can deliver care to those communities closest to where they live. But when we can't, then we bring in you know, things like telemedicine and other forms of assistance uh, or transportation systems to help them get where they belong uh, for the level of care they need. So we have goals to continually strengthen our presence uh, in care delivery. But then we also have goals to contribute to our communities. Mm. Uh, we're part of a national health system, so we have goals that pertain to our national goals. And um, each of us individually have at least one or two personal development goals per year. Um, and we spend a lot of time on, on development of those goals. But most of them relate to the quality we provide, the safety we provide. Uh, we obviously have goals about diversity and, and, and making and inclusive and making people, uh, really making Mercy One reflect the communities we live in and work in. Um, and we become much more active in that area. Uh, but also goals about financial performance and growth. So we have kind of a, a myriad of goals, but they're, yeah. they're not real fancy. Mm -hmm. I love that. Well, tell us about your community work. You started to allude to that. Um, you give back a lot to the community. You're involved in a lot of community efforts and programs. Tell us more about that. Yeah, I don't know if I give back a lot to the community. I think I get more from my work in the community <laughs> than I give back. Um, but, you know, it, it is a level of, a, for lack of a better term, I call psych income because it feels right. Yeah. Uh, and I had the privilege of joining Mercy One as the president of, of Mercy One Des Moines Medical Center back in uh, 2013. Uh, and we had some uh, phenomenal leaders on our board uh, that were already community stewards of the nth degree. And, and, and I came from a background of, uh, you know, family who was always engaged in the community. So um, I was able to, to arrive in Des Moines and West Des Moines uh, and really put my feet on the ground pretty firmly about, you know, community activity. I personally at that time got involved with uh, the Partnership, the United Way, uh, American Heart, a March of Dimes, uh, Alzheimer's, um, and not Alzheimer's, I, I apologize. Um, ALS. ALS, yeah. Yeah, and I had an opp opportunity to chair some of those um, national fundraisers, and uh, it was just extraordinary, you know. And I have to tell you, there's something special, and I know it's easy to say that when you're in central Iowa, because then people have to believe you, but having come from different parts of the country, it, there is a level of engagement here. Yeah. Unlike I've seen, and I lived in Connecticut, New York. Springfield, uh, I saw. Illinois. Illinois. Mm -hmm. uh, and grew up in West Virginia, which is a very engaged community. Yeah. Um, but there is something different here. Yeah. And I think it comes from leadership mm -hmm. at that community level and, and passing on to the next generation. Mm -hmm. And so I think it's so important uh, what each of you and all your colleagues are doing 
across all of the chambers and the partnership mm -hmm. yeah. to continue to facilitate that. It's not really a responsibility. I, I view it as an opportunity. Mm -hmm. So all of our executives have a responsibility to serve on a couple community-wide boards. And we actually map out where they are, what their skills are, and we don't want to duplicate any, yeah. but we also don't want to not be engaged with certain things. So we kind of, that's part of our plan. That's amazing. Well, there's a lot of great nonprofits in our region to be involved with that oh, are yeah. doing wonderful work. So I love that, that you do that. That's incredible. So let's let's switch gears a little bit and talk about Bob Ritz, the CEO, the leader. So we work with a lot of young professionals at the West Des Moines Chamber of Commerce. We have the largest uh, young professionals group in the state. So if Keep somebody... that group together. That's an important group. <laughs> So if somebody wanted to be a CEO someday in the healthcare industry, you know, what are some words of advice, some words of wisdom that you would give a young professional today? Well, first and foremost, I would say it was the last thing on my plan. Mm. Um, I, you know, was going to be a lawyer. Okay. Uh, and then I, then I was a college basketball player, and look, here I am. Oh, wow. Um, That's awesome. But what I also would tell you is that um, dream big mm. uh, and never give up. And, and realize that no matter what life throws at you, there's a reason for it. Yeah. And that each of us are designed to uh, pursue our destiny. Mm -hmm. um, and I think from a professional standpoint, um, there's no prescription, there's no uh, recipe for what you need to do other than um, uh, pursue every opportunity to get involved, get to know people, um, and, and learn, take time to learn. Mm -hmm. So. Um, you know, there are, in, in terms of being a, a CEO in a health uh, care organization like Mercy One or, or other organizations like that, you know, I got my undergraduate degree in business and finance and administration, and then I uh, received my master's in health services administration. Um, but that's not what gave me this opportunity. It was the people uh, who uh, I worked with mm -hmm. who would make opportunities available. So I, I was always eager. I'm still always eager. I'm, you know. Some people probably said, probably think I'm, I'm old and washed up. I, on the other hand, think I can't wait to find out what I'm doing next. Yeah. So um, I would say a high level of energy, um, I care deeply about people, have a great level of common sense, and be a phenomenal listener. Mm. And, um, and, and really be driven. And those are not things that you need a PhD for. Yeah, yeah, that's a great, great advice. I love that. We did a little bit of side talking um, too, and it sounds like Bob is a very hard worker. Um, you, you, I didn't get up say early, that. You, <laughs> I just, he gets up early, goes to bed. <laughs> maybe that I'm not a very smart worker. I, I think you're referring to that my days are a lot longer than my nights. Boy, they really are. It's or it's, I redefine what a night when it begins. When's a day? Begins. Yeah. But you know, again, when I came to Des Moines, I was so pleased to find so many. Um, leaders in this community. I mean, some of the best emails I would have with people would be four o'clock in the morning. Yeah. And I won't name who they are, but I can tell you, <laughs> you know them. Yeah. yeah, that's incredible. So how do you stay healthy? You're running a you know, large healthcare organization. How do you stay like, stay healthy? How do you find time to exercise? And I work out first thing in the morning. Okay, okay. I shouldn't say first thing. Okay. I go to my office first thing in the morning at home, but then I work out at home. Okay. And I'm, I'm fairly um, disciplined. Okay. I, uh, if I miss a day, I kind of think that the world's falling. <laughs> well, you've been an athlete for much of your life, it sounds yes. like. So, yeah. anything in particular you like to do that? I you know? have converted from running to power walking, which is a high speed walk. I walk at the average mile in a little under, uh, around 10 minutes. Oh, gosh. On a okay. six degree incline for 40 minutes. So, it's a, uh, oh, wow. having been a runner, I used to run 60 miles a week. So, I can tell you the power walk. Um, yeah, you, 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 it really puts you to the test. Your power walk is my run, so okay. Well, I, I know, and I know a lot of people. I, I actually yeah. hold on to the treadmill on power walk because it's so, it's so darn fast. Mm -hmm. But um, it's just something I can do that it doesn't tear up my, uh, my lower extremities the way my running was too. <laughs> yeah. Well, I've really enjoyed getting to know you better, getting to know the organization. I love your story about culture because you, you touch so many people. On this planet, so it just—it sounds like a beautiful thing. Well, thank you, and thanks for the opportunity. And, and you all are doing—you're doing a great job, and the growth here. You know, we continue to have plans to grow in West Des Moines, and, um, and uh, we're delighted that um, you know we're in this together. 
Well, we will have Clyde Evans call you. So. <laughs> I don't think you have to worry about that. We probably have already called Clyde Evans. So thanks a lot. So well, thank you so much, Bob, for your time. Appreciate and, it. And we just really appreciate you being here today. And, and thank you so much for joining us today at our CEO Insight Series. And we will see you soon. Go West! Yeah.